Good evening. Let's see if we can get everybody seated or we can get started. It's great to see so many people here tonight. Um, it shows that smart contract and smart nation can really capture the imagination of, of a lot of people. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a couple of minutes to introduce, we're doing a DPS and then introduce the main speaker, Vitalik. Um, Vitalik obviously knows so much more about uh, smart contracts and blockchain technically than I could ever do. So I'm going to talk about a slightly different issue um, before I hand over just very briefly. So I, I'm assuming that all of you who are here today knows everything basic about blockchains and smart contracts. Uh, I'm an expert, so you can tell that from this slide here that uh, I have done my own investigation and I, I can tell you almost everything you need to know. But seriously, um, a basic level of, of blockchain, I'm assuming the Vitalik will also not go through any of that in detail. What I want to talk about is within the financial industry. I think there's so many people today who can see the promise of blockchain, the promise of smart contract, and yet it seems that it's not really happening. It's happening in a lot of places in the ecosystem, and Han and I were discussing it before. But in the financial industry, there are definitely steps. But, but what is that stopping it from happening? And you can ask a lot of people what it is. I have my own view, and I just want to share it with you before we hand it over. Um, so, so what's the vision of this here? Um, and just being to slightly funny about it, you, you imagine this future world where you wake up, you know, the, the, the refrigerator that you just bought, tells you that it was been trying to, to buy something from the supermarket but your credit card was turned down and therefore you can't get the beers that you need for tonight's football match. Um, so what do you do? You, you call up the bank on screen and you realize there's an overdraft issue and immediately you settle this with the bank uh, online, uh, maybe with a smart contract, whatever it is, you get your overdraft and then maybe the next thing that happen is that your insurance guy um, comes by, he realizes you have a problem with the car, he looks at your insurance claim, and immediately he improves it on his iPad, and with the smart contracts, all these things get flushed through. Um, is that the future? It, it surely could be. Um, is it something that is coming tomorrow? Maybe or maybe not, but it's within the realm of possibility, and I guess that's why we can all get excited about this, especially in, in, in a smart nation. I'm sure some of you have much bigger thought that I could ever come up with, but there are obviously also those who have this view of the world, which is that maybe that's not such a fantastic place to go to. I personally think that it's the way we want to go. Um, and um, I think in the panel today, later on, we'll have some of the good discussions around how we could, we could possibly get there and where smart contracts would, would fit in. Okay, so what is the problem? I think we'll hear a lot about the technology problem and Vitalik will know them better than, than, than anybody else. We hear about capacity issues and a lot of things that I'm not smart enough to, to really understand the details of. But I also think there's a different one, which is I think it's one of, of, um, of, of having the right incentives in place here. And what I see is for some of these things to really work, you gotta have a large group of people coming together. Right. You've got to have these people who really want to work together, either for a consortium or whatever it is, because individually as bank, the incentives might not be quite as great. And so the question for any bank is, do I wait uh, with the risk of being rolled over, or do I try and get in early? And I think banks, including ourselves, are still trying to find our, our feet there. Um, so, so I think that issue of how do we get from where we are now but we can all see the promise into something which is a successful launch, it's not such a clear path. So I've been thinking about it. We all want the best of both worlds. What do you get if you marry this banker and this um, innovator, um, the, the Vitalik's of the world or, or these type of people? Because a lot of people say today that those are the type of people we need. You know, we have technologies that can't speak banking language, and we've got bankers that are clueless, they don't understand what, what, what is out to hit them. So one view is that you get the perfect bank CEO. You know, you get the one who really will buy into this and he'll put his investment dollars around it. You could have the view that all those people will actually go and start up their own startup companies, but I'm not sure, unfortunately, that you get any of those 
I think you get some kind of miscreature, unfortunately, who can see the promise but can't really make it work because you don't really have the right mechanisms in place. So it's good that David is coming up here now because I'm going to talk about him next. So if that is one of the problems, what is not the solution? The solution is not that bankers just go and hire more cons uh, consultants and ask them to say something uh, and then philosophize about it. They've got to do some action. They've got to try and get into the sandbox. They've got to try and do some experiments. Equally, I think the solution from the startup point of view is not to think that all bankers are dumb and the best thing that we know of an Apple computer is something like this. Or maybe something like that. That's equally not the solution. The solution, therefore, to me, lies somewhere where we do need a smart nation. We do need a government that can help bring the parties together, try and launch some of these things, get the people in the ecosystem to come together and I'm very encouraged that some of the signs that we've seen with MAS, the launch they did on Tuesday. Uh, and I'm going to, of course, introduce Vitalik in a second. But before I do that, I'll just introduce David Lee, who some of you hopefully know. David is too shy to say these things himself, so I have to do it. But I think he's really been a trailblazer for Singapore in many of these aspects around fintech. And it's these types of things that we do need to get people to start to work together. Um, so what are we doing at DPS around these things? In a certain sense, we're doing the same thing as all the other banks are doing. Right? We're trying to figure out which one. I think if I could say something that we do differently is that we involve our people more and we involve our businesses more. When we look at business cases, we do have an innovation there because we need it to spur the, the spirit of this. But really, without the business unit seeing a case, without our own people trying to get involved, it's never really going to work. So the first thing we do is we get people involved. We get them excited. We, we get people like me. I'm from finance, um, which is probably why I'm clueless around all these things. Uh, we get them to get a chance to get involved with these technologies, try hands-on and, 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 and play with these things and see if they can, sort of can make them understand. And we get a lot of great feedback. It doesn't lead to the next big thing, maybe, maybe immediately, but it surely is a step in that direction in invigorating the organization and become more a tune of the digital age. Then, as most of you know, we do have an innovation lab because we do have need to have a playground to play and experiment with some of these technologies. And we are experimenting with different blockchain technologies. Some of you have seen them, some of the, the news that has come out, and they're obviously a little bit more than what you've seen in, in the news right now. We are trying, we're being selective, I think you have to. There's so many different things out there. And some of you here are great examples of locally bred blockchain technology uh, uh, solutions. Autonomy is obviously being one of them, but, but not the only one here tonight. I had the fortune of knowing some of you who have really done something which could be the next big thing. Um, then we have run a number of accelerators. We run hackathons. These types of things you've seen run by other banks as well. But again, I want to come back to the one big thing. People have to be involved. Without our people getting excited about it, without them wanting to engage, we're just going to be like everybody else. So with that, I'm going to say this last thing. Let's just try and see. Because if you look at these math here, if we just take small incremental step forwards, and David will help us get there eventually, this is what it looks like, um, the progress we can make in Singapore. But if we digress and let the other companies and the other countries take over, this is also what it could look like. And those numbers are pretty staggering um, if you start to think about them in, in many, many aspects of life. Now with that, I'm not going to bore you anymore. I'm going to hand it over to the main speaker, Vitalik, who says he's just another guy. I'm not sure he's just another guy, but he is a guy. And I'm sure he's going to tell us a little bit more about Ethereum and smart contract. Vitalik?